So yeah, I just thought it would be interesting. Something which has been going around in my mind is the uh, Shri Ramaj was saying that in the beginning devotees chant and they hear the holy name and they think I'm not doing too bad. And he was saying, of course, you know, they, they aren't doing too bad, but that's only if they, if they're going to make progress, if they just stop at that and they don't go any further than that. And at the actual point of the chanting is that um, we should feel Krishna dancing on our tongue, feel Krishna dancing in our ear and uh, feel Krishna dancing in our heart. But then if we want him to dance in our heart, we have to invite him into our heart in the first place. So the importance of an intent, having that intention whilst chanting. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to just mechanically. Yeah. Doing my, my, I am doing my japa now. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So how how what's the secret? How do you how do you cultivate that kind of connection to Krishna? Well, I think part of the problem is just the fact that you could go for years, decades, just just telling yourself you're not doing too bad. Because you know that you could be doing a lot worse. You could be not chanting at all. You could be smoking cigars. So you think, oh, well, I'm not, I'm not doing too bad. And, uh, and compared to where you are at, that's true. But it's far from what the goal is, you know. Mm. But you may just stop there because you're not clear that that's... <laughs> that the whole point isn't just to be here uh, not too bad <laughs> I guess it's like um, <clears throat> something that we we find in our material lives for a lot of us anyway is that kind of you just settle uh, you know I'll just do my 9 to 5 job and yeah. I'll be happy and you know, go to the pub on the weekend it seems like that same mentality of not trying to be our best self creeping into the Krishna consciousness too you know <laughs> Well, yeah, it's interesting because devotional service could be something where you clock in and then you clock out. Mm. And something even worse than that, have you heard of work to rule? No. When you work to rule, it's when you're in the job and um, you're not going to go on strike, but you'll just do the bare minimum. Mm. And that way uh, you, you'll get a wage, but the boss won't be very happy, but he can't really kick you out because you're doing what you're supposed to be doing but no more than that mm. and you just work to rule yeah i know that uh in in cardiff we had some at one point we had people working in our cafe and Tarknaf said no we need devotees here that are doing this for krishna because yeah. because of that problem if as soon as people are being employed then they're gonna do the bare minimum to get their paycheck whereas someone who's who's like a practicing devotee who's sold into the mission and is actually trying to do it for a higher purpose they have they have more motivation so i guess how, how does someone who doesn't feel like they have that motivation like they're not doing it for krishna they're just clocking in how do we cultivate that that motivation well um no names mentioned but uh we had one devotee and uh his nickname was minimum 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 we used to sing that and uh, his whole um, meditation was how could he get out of how could he do what he had to do as quickly as he could and, and, and get and be away you know mm. so he try and cook corners have other things ready in time so that he would, wouldn't have to hang around you know um, but, but it, and it's such a shame because um, it, it, in, in devotional service you get the taste from devotional service when you just go that little extra mile you just do that little bit more so you could just do the service or you could do the minimum or you could go the extra mile and the person that's going to be happy that's going to be satisfied that's going to be going back to godhead is the one that's doing the extra mile you know mm, but you, sure. you could kid yourself you could kid yourself into thinking uh, I'm not daft like him. He he he, he does all this as well. But I, I'm away, and I, I've done my bit. So Krishna has to let me go back to Godhead anyway, and I managed to do it with, without having to do as much work as him. <laughs> yeah, 
it's interesting you can see those devotees that are going the extra mile like and I've, i'm guilty of that same mindset you just described it's like oh look this person's here like some one of the boys in the temple he's just always staying late like he's just doing cooking all day for the deity stays late washes the pots he, like takes his time he makes sure when he washes the pot they are sparkling yeah. and I, my mind is like this guy you know you, you know you could do you could cut a corner and you know you could but he's he's you know a, an exalted personality like. and then uh, apply that to chanting you know because mm. you're gonna um you're gonna have to chant 16 rounds anyway mm. so to go the extra mile is with your chanting is to start really thinking you know am i am i chanting this with the right attitude um am i am i actually chanting this to please krishna or am i chanting this mantra just to please myself mm. i'm thinking like cuz um my it would be lovely to have that extra mile mentality towards krishna consciousness um and i i believe i had it at some point in the past but incrementally i've moved away from it is it a, is it a matter of incrementally moving back towards it or can you like take take a yeah. pill and suddenly be <laughs> well if you, if you try if you try to become a sannyasi straight away then that's not going to work hmm. so um self-realization is you know you figure out what it is what is an extra mile for you hmm. and what is something that you can that you can maintain you know hmm. something which is sustainable and uh, yeah, it was just f f funny. I was chanting today. I chanted some extra rounds because my day off, and I was chanting, and, and um, I thought I should chant. Rupa Goswami says we should we should be enthusiastic, so I should be enthusiastic. So I was chanting enthusiastically, and I was thinking he also says we should uh, have confidence, so we should chant enthusiastically and confidently. And then he also says we have to be patient. Okay, so I'm, I'm enthusiastic here. I'm chanting with confidence. And I'm not pushing Krishna to come up with any bliss or any profound realization or anything. I'm just happy to be doing this. And we'll, and we'll just leave it at that. And if Krishna wants to step in, that's up to him. And if not, then that's also okay. So I was chant like that. And then we need to follow the rights of principles, Kirtanam, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Krishna, Smarnam, abandoning the association of non devotees. And I'm following the footsteps of the previous acharyas. So there's six really powerful um, attitudes and intentions you can tune into whilst chanting. And it's amazing because the, my chanting immediately changed because I, I was thinking you never see anyone doing something enthusiastically, slowly, generally. Generally, if someone's doing something enthusiastically, they're, they're doing it um, quite quickly. And so if you're chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. And there's some drive there, there's some rhythm there. And you're excited, you're happy to be doing it. So it's totally different chanting enthusiastically to just chanting because you've got to do this. And, uh, you know, you're doing, you're doing not too bad. Hmm. That's a really um, interesting like approach to applying those nectar instructions specifically to Japa. Mm. It's, uh, it's something I wouldn't have personally thought about mm. connecting. Mm. But yeah, that those would you say the the uh, the items that are unfavorable also apply to Japa? I'm trying to think of them off the top of my head. Yeah, um actually had a precious Japa Japani So um if you're um because the mind will wander onto other things, accumulating things, uh, making plans, which are definitely an over endeavor. You're making plans during Japa, and that's definitely an over endeavor. You know, you should be able to at least have a break when you're chanting Japa. So if you're still there uh, scheming about some way you're going to seal the deal with something, uh, and then Prajapa, you may be you may be chanting, but there may be Prajapa going on in your mind. You may be thinking of some funny joke or some funny film or something and the chanting is going on but actually it's just prajapa that, that you're absorbed in and then um, <clears throat> associating 
with worldly minded persons and um, being greedy for mundane achievements. So these are all uh, different forms of inattentiveness that are coming up, different brands of inattention that are there and they're distracting the mind because you're, you're contemplating and you're scheming um, and, and, and that's because of being inattentive because you're not prepared to make that austerity to just drop this now, you know. Krishna's in control, I'm not in control. Let's leave it in Krishna's hands at least for two hours, for goodness sake. Let's just have a break for two hours at least. And then uh, we can we can reconstruct the universe after that. It's kind of interesting because, um, you know, like making, for me personally, making that transition from the ashram into looking about careers or jobs or ways to actually earn your money. We we have we may have some worldly duty, some kind of career or some kind of responsibility in the material world, and it can be quite natural for us to become super absorbed in that career or those worldly things so much so that it invades our sadhana and invades our Krishna consciousness. You know. Well, it shouldn't. It you know at a four o'clock in the morning. If you get into bed at eight. And you're getting up at two o'clock in the morning. You've got a lot of me time now, where you don't have to worry about anything other than just your relationship with Krishna. Mm. And if you can't, if you can't organize your life to do that, then you need to work out how you how you can how at eight p.m. in the evening you need to work out how you can prioritize now, because um, if your head goes down at that time and you're up at two three o'clock in the morning then you're, you're guaranteed success. If you can rise that early, if you can get that, you know, carved in stone that you're going to do that, wherever you are, whether you're in a, in your house, in the temple, or in an igloo in the North Pole, if you can get up at that time, then the ether's still, there's nothing nagging or interfering right now. You can leave the phone off, and you can just read, you can chant, then you can enter the day, you know, um, more more efficiently. I mean, I always find if you chant, you see, it's funny actually because the way the maternal energy works is, she says to us, "Look, we need to be go become more efficient, and because of that, we're going to have to cut down on the sadhana because it's it's <coughs> slowing us down. But it's actually it's it's so much like this morning I got up, so I chanted twice as many rounds, and I just I just was going around doing things. I sewed my umbrella. I did this. I did the next thing. I, I varnished my merchant. All just little jobs. All just like two or three minutes long. <coughs> Normally, when I don't chant a lot of rounds, they they're just all on the to do list, and I think, oh, I can't cope with that. No, that probably take three hours. I can't do this. And you end up with all these things, and you just mount, they just mount up until they become insurmountable. As soon as you start increasing your chanting, you just cut through the material energy like a hot knife through butter. And it's like, okay, what do we do? That, that, next thing. Okay, let's get that done. What's the next one? Okay. There's no mental platform. It's just ba bum. Okay, next thing, ba bum. Next thing, ba bum. And you just get them done really fast. And then if, you, if you've got a job and you're making money and whatever it is you're doing, if you've got that 32 rounds under your belt before you start, you're going to be twice at least twice as efficient you'll get you'll get more done reminds me that um uh the seven habits of highly effective people there was a, a prayer by um i think it was martin luther king he said uh, i've got so much to do today that i need to spend an extra hour on my knees mm -hmm. so you need more help so if you're if you're going to pursue a career and you're going to need money and you're going to have a wife and you're going to have children then you need your sadhana more than just a brahmachari that just he just gets dumped on the street with a bag of books and he, and he's just told pass these out and you get pushed at the end of the day. He doesn't have to think too much. That's why Grihasta Ashram is higher than Brahmachari Ashram because there's more responsibility. You've got to look after people now. You've got to make sure that you come up with the goods. You've got people depending on you, you know, you can't just wimp out now. So you take on more responsibility and you become more accountable. That means you need more sadhana. You need more help. <laughs> Not less. And that's that. That's where I think a lot of devotees go wrong. They change ashram. 
they change the situation they're in and they think, oh, right, okay, well, I'm, I'll need to adjust now and do less sadhana. No, nope. bad move. Yeah, it definitely seems like it can be a very, like, treacherous time, treacherous transition. It, it, yeah. There's, like, a lot of pitfalls which you could fall. So that's a really helpful uh, point you made there, definitely. And you may have a few excuses. Uh, you may have a few things in your hidden agenda. And you need some good excuses to not pursue Krishna consciousness as much as you as you contemplated you would in the beginning, you know, because you didn't really realize what this was going to entail. So you have to be clear and honest with yourself as well. And then it's it's amazing actually if you just ask Krishna to help you, you know, to give you the intelligence and say, okay, look, um, I, I've got these material desires now. I'm going to start associating with someone of the opposite sex. Um, but really, I don't want to mess her life up and mess my life up as well. I, I want to uh, I want to assist this person in going back to Godhead. And if I can do that, we can become a great team and we can bring up Christian conscious children. I'll be so happy. I'll be so fulfilled, you know. That's that's what we that's our intention. That should be our intention, you know. We've been reading the books properly and assimilating the information properly. Uh, and then Krishna knows at the same time that we're frightened, that we're affected by material desire. That sometimes we lose faith. Sometimes we have doubts. He he knows all these things. So if we go to Krishna with all that, all that darkness that we've got in the heart, then Krishna takes on me. To show them special mercy, I'll destroy their ignorance. But you have to go to Krishna, you have to ask him to step into your heart and illuminate your heart and take away the darkness, you know. It's the darkness that's causing the fear. So if Krishna can, if you can feel Krishna radiating in your heart, then you'll be a brilliant householder, you'll do fantastic service, you'll have a very happy wife, and you'll have really happy, even if they're not full-on devotees, you'll have kids that are very, very able to Krishna consciousness. So we have to invite Krishna into our heart. It's kind of the yeah. question that we, we started open, we opened up the podcast with. Yeah. And you know the thing is, 16 rounds isn't, it isn't enough time. And also, Krishna's like, oh, he's doing his 16 rounds because he has to do his 16 rounds. So that's that's okay. And then that's kind of like, well, I did the bare minimum, so Maya, get off my back. I've done my bit. Krishna, you need to to uh, make me feel blissful now. I've done my 16 rounds. But it's when you do more than that, when you when you go the extra mile and you think, well, actually, those 16, I'm just warming up. Now that I'm actually starting to get into it, why put the bead bag down now? Now it's actually starting to get interesting. I'm starting to feel like Krishna's present in the sound vibration. Let me do 16 like this. And then Krishna's like, wow, this guy's pretty nice. He's really uh, he's really showing that he wants me. And he's inviting me to come into his heart. He's clearing away all the debris, all the nonsense, all the inattention. Okay, that's what I'm here for. That's why I sent Srila Prabhupada. That's why I came as Lord Chaitanya. That's why I sent Srinivas Acharya, the, the, the Goswami is Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Just write the books and I'll take care of everything else, Krishna told Prabhupada. It was Krishna that pushed Prabhupada to come. Mm. Prabhupada didn't want to come. Krishna said, look, you go. It's Krishna has got a whole plan. He wants us back. He wants to go into our heart. So just allow him to do it. Just show him that you want him, you know. I told yeah, go, the, go the extra mile. That's what we, this is kind of a theme, isn't it? Like... Yeah. That's a good meditation for us now for the next week is just think about that. Okay, how can I go the extra mile? How yeah. can I get some more rounds in? How can I get yeah. some more reading in? Let's, let's Keep try and... clicker, chant, yeah. chant an extra few mantras here, a few mantras there. It, it, it'll, it'll total up to like 40 rounds. You'd be amazed, you know, how, how easy it is to do that. Yeah, we need all the help we can get. <laughs> yeah. I like yeah. it. This is this has been like medicine for my uh, my ears. Like, honestly, it's exactly what I need to hear today. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure others too. But yeah, um, thanks for another awesome podcast. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon. Keep well. Okay, Harry Bo. Harry Bo.